Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Zach. In the video today, we're going to cover the new release of Raytha 1.2.0, which includes a very powerful feature called Embeddable Functions. And Embeddable Functions is going to allow us to write actual code that will run on the server inside the Raytha application without having to redeploy or recompile the application. It all happens within inside the user interface of the administrator panel and uh, allows you to still extend the capability of the platform. So we'll show you everything that you can do with it along with our vision for where this feature will take us in the future and everything that we imagine we can do with it. All right, we are in the Wraith Administrator portal. I am under functions here on the left side. That's the new feature that's available in version 1.2.0. And I'm going ahead and click create function. I'm going to give my function a name. I'm just going to call it test for now. But what's important here is the developer name, which you cannot change after you create it. And this is what you're going to use to call a function. Now there's trigger types here. If you're watching this right now, I'm recording this in April of 2024. If you're watching this well into the future, we may have additional trigger types such as timers or, or more like internal trigger types. So the plan is to add uh, more trigger types in the future. But as of right now, the initial release just includes an HTTP request trigger. We're gonna make it as an active function. You get some default boilerplate code and what's required is the get request and the post request to see what happens. Just click save and go to the actual function now that we created an HTTP request trigger. So we'll go and we'll just copy the URL and follow the pattern, which is slash execute slash the, the developer name. And you see here this output a JSON blob for success is true. And if we go back to our function, you can see that that is all that we are doing. We do have multiple types that we can return. So a JSON result is probably the most common type if you're building maybe a custom API that you wanna uh, generate. But you can also output an HTML, almost like a custom HTML page. You can also redirect to another URL. You could also just output a uh, custom status code along with uh, a message. So that is what the get request will do. The post request is pretty much exactly the same, except uh, it receives a payload, which is the form collection of the received uh, payload. So the query is the query parameters if you include some. So I think it might make sense to show an example of that. So I'm going to just say query params and then we'll just say query just to see the data structure that comes through. So if I do that and if I come here and I, and I don't add any query, query parameters, you see it's just an empty list. But if I do A equals one and B equals two, you see it comes through just like that. What's important to know here is this is JavaScript and it's built on what is known as ClearScript, which is a library that is maintained by Microsoft. So you do have the full power of the JavaScript engine and everything that comes with it. Obviously we wanna be able to do a lot more. And in order to do that, we need to be able to interact with the data of the Raytha platform. We need to be able to make calls out to external APIs and even send emails. That's why we also offer the built-in objects. So we have under the documentation website under Wraith of Functions, we have an entire intro page about writing code, how to add the information, including things like environment variables if you do want to self-host. And we have information on the HTTP request trigger along with sample code if you want to dive deeper into that. But we also have built-in functions, and this is key. Let's just copy the sample code and see what happens. This is pulling from the post content type and outputting the response. So if we just go ahead and replace that, oops. Go ahead, clean that up a little bit. Let's go here. 
as you can see, I have the sample posts available here. But this is powerful because this means you can pull data from the platform. And this is the API layer that you can access. So you can follow this pattern. We have to get content items and we just put in posts here, but we also have some optional parameters. If you did want to use some of those to kind of do additional filter down, you can get item by ID. And we can also save data to the platform by calling something like create content item. So you can actually post data back. And this is useful if you want to have a form on your website where you can save that data to the form. And you can also use it to send emails as well. So here's an example of sending an email from the platform. And you can also make API calls out of the platform and get a response by using the HTTP object, which includes the get, post, put, and delete functions. So here's an example right here in the documentation of using the API to PDF website to generate a PDF file. So you can have your, H your HTML payload here in this JavaScript object. You'll need an API key from their website and you can do a post call using the HTTP client object that's provided to you here with this information and then output the PDF file that's been generated. So this documentation includes examples for everything that you can do for these objects that are provided to you, including the current user and the current organization. So maybe there are certain actions you want to block off that can only be performed by a user in a particular user group, for example, or maybe you want to pull information from the current organizations. You can always output this data just to see what, what you get from the data structure perspective. And then from there you can, do what you want. So let's actually perform an action that's going to save an item to the database. We're going to move this to the to the get request because I don't want to load a boomerang and have to go through that. We're just going to copy that sample code. Let's go in here and we're not going to need this, but we are going to we are going to use the query. So we'll grab the query information expecting keys with we'll say first name and last name. And then we're going to just combine we'll, we'll first name value here, last name value. And we're going to say the title of the post is going to be first name value plus let's put a little space in there, last name value. And following our pattern with Wraith is that it needs to match the developer name of the uh, field that you're filling out. So if we're submitting a post, then we need to make sure that we're doing that properly. So I'm going to click edit here. We have two field types, but I'm going to go to settings fields and we can see the developer name is actually content. So we're just going to copy that back over and replace that from the example value. We're going to, we're just going to hard code a value that says hello world, just like that. And when we submit a post, every uh, content item in Raytha needs to have a template attached to it. We'll need to just find the template ID of the content item detail view. Let's click edit and we can just grab that straight from the URL. So we have the detail view template ID. We are submitting it to the post content type. False is, let's remind ourselves what false means. So here's the create content type, save as draft. Now we do want this to be published. We don't want this to be draft mode. So we are going to, and here's the template ID. And then this is just a dictionary of the key value properties that we want to submit. We're in pretty good shape. Let's click save. We'll head back over to our test and we are expecting first name equals John and last name equals Doe. And success will go back here and go to posts. And here it is. We actually submitted it into the database. So that's a full example of showing rate of functions in action. Looking toward the future, the embeddable functions is going to allow us to add additional capability to the Raytha platform. Two things come to mind, such as webhooks, as well as timer triggers. So the first one being webhooks, where if there's certain, a, a certain action that happens within the Raytha platform, such as creating a content item 
or deleting a content item or adding a user or logging in, you could trigger a function which could take some kind of action either just by manipulating data and saving it or perhaps making an external API call using that HTTP client object. So we think that's gonna be very powerful. The other thing being timer trigger, for example, having a recurring trigger on, let's say every hour, that's going to look at a uh, loop through the data and take some kind of action or cl data cleanup or make an API call to sync data with another platform. So those are two things that we feel will really enhance the capability and we look forward to building those components. If you're interested in learning more about Raytha, go to Raytha.com, check out the open source content management system and follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Raytha HQ on all the social media. And uh, go ahead and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And we'll see you in the next video.